Hi, my name is Amy. My name is Sanjali. Marissa Cook. And I'm Megan Simonson. And our topic proposal was on the identification of therapeutics to potentially eliminate homozygous inheritance of cystic fibrosis from mutations in the CFTR gene. To begin with our problem statement, cystic fibrosis is an autosomal recessive disease which negatively impacts multiple organs in the body, resulting in a high mortality rate. By understanding the specific gene mutation in carriers of the disease, we can identify potential therapeutics to prevent the passing of the mutation to offspring, saving countless lives every year. First, what is cystic fibrosis? Cystic fibrosis is a progressive genetic disease that causes persistent lung infections and limits the ability to breathe over time. Cystic fibrosis is also life-threatening, and people with the condition tend to have a shorter than normal lifespan. As you can see by the image on the right, you can see the differences between a healthy lung and a lung affected by cystic fibrosis. Clearly, the lung affected with cystic, vir cystic fibrosis um, is clogged with cystic fibrosis mucus in the airway. Moving on to how cystic fibrosis is inherited. Every person has two copies of the CFTR gene, one inherited from the mother and one from the father. For a person to have cystic fibrosis, there has to be a mutation in both copies of the CFTR gene. People with only one copy of the CFTR gene are called carriers, but they do not have the disease. Each time two CF carriers have a child, the chances are different, as can be seen by the image on the right. Likewise, cystic fibrosis is caused by changes or mutations in the cystic fibrosis transmembrane conductance regulator, also known as CFTR. The CFTR gene is located at position 7q31.2, as can be seen by the image below. Surprisingly, there are over 1,900 mutations identified that result in cystic fibrosis. However, today we'll be focusing on the most common of these mutations, which is specifically the F508 del. CFTR gene protein background. CFTR gene provides instructions for making a protein called the cystic fibrosis transmembrane conductance regulator, like mentioned before. This protein functions as a channel across the membrane of cells that produces mucus, sweat, saliva, tears, and digestive enzymes, which are crucial for the daily functions of the human body. So what is the function of the CFTR protein? The CFTR protein creates channels on the cell surface to allow the movement of chloride in and out of the cell. The CFTR proteins are found at the surface of the cells in many parts of the body, including the lungs, sweat glands, intestines, pancreas, sinuses, and reproductive system. Here they act like channels with gates that open and close to control the flow of water and particles such as chloride ions in and out of the cell. By controlling the flow of ions in and out of the cell, the CFTR proteins help make sure that there is the right balance of salt and water in our organs. As can be seen by the image on the left, when the CFTR protein functions properly and normally, the balance of the chloride and fluid at the cell surface remains normal. However, if you look on the right, you can see um, when the CFTR protein does not function properly and there is a mutation, the balance of chloride and fluids is disrupted, causing mucus in various organs to become thick and sticky, causing various cases of cystic fibrosis. The CFTR protein is composed of 1,480 amino acids. And this protein contains a single chain of amino acids that are grouped into five functional regions called domains. There are two transmembrane domains, two cytoplasmic nucleotide binding domains, and one regulatory domain. On the image on the right, you can see the locations for all five of these domains. Here is the phylogenetic tree gathered from Unipra and BLAST. The human CFTR protein is most similar to that of a chimpanzee and a gorilla. This group is a part of a clade. We can see that the protein for humans and chimpanzees may be most similar because they share a recent common ancestor. 
The most common cystic fibrosis mutation is f 508 del and it is primarily, primarily considered to be a processing mutation. A uh, processing mutation occurs when um, an amino acid is deleted or an inc incorrect amino acid is added. So in this case, there's a deletion of the three base pairs. In the image below, you can see that it's CTT um, of the CSTR gene, leading to a loss of an amino acid called phenylalanine um, in the CSTR protein at position 508. And because of the deletion of this amino acid, uh, the CSTR protein can't stay in the proper 3D state, the 3D shape, and proper chloride and water transfer can occur. And because of this, the cell recognizes that the protein um, isn't able to function properly and isn't in the right shape, so it dispo disposes of it. Uh, there are multiple defects that this mutation can cause. The first one is that uh, fewer CFTR proteins get to the cell surface where they are normally located. And the second is that CFTR proteins don't open correctly even if they do reach the cell surface. So in the image in the center, you can see that the protein, the CFTR protein is at the surface of the cell, but the, there's more chloride ions on the inside of the cell than outside, which means that it's not working properly. Patients homozygous for the F508 del uh, mutation have what is called classical CF. So classical cystic fibrosis causes patients to be more uh, pancreatic insufficient and have more severe lung complications than patients with other types of mutations. So this mutation is a class two mutation. There's um, six different types of classes which affect um, this protein in different direct, different ways, as you can see in the image on the right, but the class two mutation causes defective trafficking of the CFTR protein, and it does not, in most cases, it does not reach the surface of the cell. Here is an image of the ligand interaction gathered from PIMO and UNIPRAT. There are three solubilizing mutations in the bound ATP. Here is the electrostatic image of the protein. The negative areas on the image are displayed in red, while the more positive areas are in blue. And this is the image of the mutation F508-DEL. It was gathered from PIMO. The mutation is in yellow on the right. Methods we use were therapeutic studies from, therapeutic that were from various studies. So these include IVAC, Keftor, a potentiator, lumakeftor, a corrector, tezakeftor, another corrector, trikapta, another corrector, and eliforsen, which is another CFTR corrector. As I mentioned before, potentiators and correctors um, help with the CFTR protein, so potentiators increase the function of these channels to the cell surface, whereas correctors improve the processing and delivery of the functional CFTR protein. Production correctors correct the read-through or read-through agents promote the read-through of premature termination codons. Ivacaftor is a CFTR potentiator that enhances chloride transport of CFTR on the cell surface. So in the first image, you can see that there are more chloride ions on the inside uh, than outside, which means that it's not working properly. But after Ivacaftor is added, um, the channel opens up and the chloride ions are able to flow um, in and out of the cell. Um, Lumacaftor is a CFTR corrector that increases trafficking of the f 508 del CFTR um, to the cell surface. So it works together with Ivacaftor to enhance the chloride transport um, Ivacaftor potentiates the channel open, while Lumacaftor facilitates the processing and trafficking of the f 508 del CFTR. In a study conducted using Lumacaftor and Ivacaftor, treatment of patients with cystic fibrosis who have the f 508 del mutation were conducted in three cohorts. The first cohort was a shorter um, period of 21 days using Lumacaftor and Ivacaftor combination. However, in the second and third cohorts, a longer period of 56 days were used. The evidence for a combination of Lumacaftor and Ivacaftor improves the FEV1 for patients with cystic fibrosis who are homozygous. The results support further exploration of combination treatments. 
Tezacaftor is a corrector that improves CFTR protein folding and trafficking, so more mature protein appears at the cell membrane. In a study, sustained benefit using Tezacaftor, which is Ivacaftor plus Lumacaftor, improved only 3-4% for patients homozygous with the mutation. However, it is better tolerated with the combination of another corrector um, using a triple combination therapy. Trikafta is another triple combination therapy of tezacaftor, ivacaftor, and alexacaftor modulators, which helped fix the defective CFTR protein. However, there are limitations. For patients 12 years and older, trikafta is only approved. So each trial, the primary analysis looked at increases in the percent predicted forced expiratory volume in one second, also known as PPFEV1, which is an established marker of cystic fibrosis. And in both trials, tri trikafta increased those parameters. Aliforcin is a self-administered treatment through an aerosol device. It is delivered as a mist for optimal absorption to the lungs. It is an antisense oligonucleotide, which is a synthetic DNA fragment that binds to mRNA around the F508 mutation. In a random double-blind placebo-controlled test, there was a dose escalation study for four weeks. It discovered that regular doses up to 50 milligrams were safe and led to improvements in respiratory symptoms. In the graph on the right, the bottom axis represents the dose escalation. The difference between the placebo group and the dose escalation groups of the 50 milligrams were statistically significant. We can see from this graph that those without the treatment did not have an improvement, just as those who took doses of 50 milligrams, which was too high. In the results, we have a table of CFDR modulators approved by European Medicines Agency. As of 2020, there are three, Kaleidico, which is Ivacaftor, or combi, which is Lumacaftor plus Ivacaftor, and Simkevi or Simdeco, which is Tezacaftor plus Ivacaftor. In each of these, there are limitations in the age of use as well as mutation status. The most promising for our study was in Simkevi or Simdeco, which patients heterozygous for F508 DEL almost completely lost their mutation and symptoms as well as carrier effects almost disappeared. So this would be the most promising for limiting CF in family lines. As I said before, the limitations such as age, mutation type, and other genetic factors make individual or combination therapeutics um, ineffective. However, there's a lot of improvement by conduction of genotype assays before drug administration, as well as further research in types of mutation matching to types of treatment. In conclusion, Gene therapy would be the most, light, the most effective option in alleviating cystic fibrosis in families. However, it isn't viable. So therapeutic methods such as CTF, CFTR modulators can accelerate progress towards elimination of this transfer to offspring. However, we must be aware that potential combination therapies are expensive and not everyone will react the same due to differences in mutations in genes and sequences. Our next steps in our study would be to study the location target in different sequences of patients and how these modulators can interact specifically with the common F508 DEL mutation to normalize um, the defect and help stop the transfer in family lines. Our references are mostly from studies conducted using the different modulators as well as Uniprot for our protein analysis. Thank you for listening to our presentation.